This is F Society IRC Podcast, a Mr. Robot Show. I'm your moderator of this chat, Hiroja Shai. This is the season finale of Mr. Robot. Uh, the episode is called Zero Day. Uh, we do have a winner for the giveaway, and I will be not only recapping the episode, but also giving my thoughts on season two. I apologize for the delay in the episode. I uh, had some things that happened, but here it is, and um, let's get into the episode. So we open up with the episode of Krista and the uh, douchebag cheating husband boyfriend that she was with and he's meeting with her and he's trying to plead with her to give her um, information on Elliot and the reason is is that he had recently been hacked with the whole Ashley Madison thing which is um, quite future telling on the part of the show and so his life in and of itself has fallen apart and I guess he's trying to see if he can get back with Krista or something of that nature but the other thing is that he was able to track Elliot, and he also reported the theft of his dog, but also the hacking break-in. And in, from talking to the police, he realized that Elliot was not that just like this weird stalker dude that might be stalking um, Krista, but he is a well-known hacker, and that the New York police have been looking for him for six weeks. Now, the six weeks time frame is very telling. Because time has been so warped and messed around on the show because of the unreliable nature of Elliot as the narrator of the show, but also because that is the time frame upon which Elliot, uh, not Elliot, but Shayla has been dead. So Elliot might be somebody that the uh, New York police could be looking for because of Shayla's death. The other thing is that. <clears throat> This guy was able to track Elliot down because his do- his dog is microchipped, which could come to play. It doesn't this episode, but it might come into play next season because Elliot did take the dog in to the veterinarian. The veterinarians, if you're ever familiar with dogs that have been chipped, always scan for the dog. They always um, log it in, report it, you know, report the information just in case the dog is stolen or something like that of that nature. Is something you understand that if you have a microchip dog is something you kind of want or type of service you want. So he's kind of trying to get any type of information on Elliot or anything like that. Um, he doesn't get anything from Krista. It cuts into the scene that was revealed uh, a week early because this episode was delayed because of the, uh, the uh, workplace shooting that took place in Virginia. And this um, guy sitting in, that the cheating husband is sitting in the... Uh, in his apartment and basically the hack happened Um, the whole fallout of what is happening in the world has happened and we didn't even see it take place and he's a bit of a panic in himself because one of the servers that uh, Elliot was bouncing around with around in was in Estonia and if everything is good to go then law enforcement can get their information from Estonia but Estonia in itself has collapsed because people are protesting because basically, basically Elliot's uh, F Society's hack has worked and all of E Corp's uh, debt and data has been erased then we cut into Elliot wakes up and he is in Tyrell Suburban uh, he gets waking, waking up by a parking attendant and it, he, to him it's been two days and he has no recollection or no memory of what has happened and there's also no sign of Tyrell in fact there will be no sign of Tyrell throughout the rest of this episode and it's going to be a mystery that is going to be I guess left to be solved next season but Elliot has no memory of what has happened and, and it turns out he's been missing for three days the hack went on without not only of Elliot being aware that he implemented the hack, but that other members of F Society were not even participants of the hack in itself. So Elliot is kind of scrambling around trying to figure out what has happened, what's going on, why can't he remember, and where Tyrell is. And it, that's pretty much his mission, mission apparatus throughout the entire episode. While the rest of F Society um, are trying to do the cleanup. They're trying to erase all the data, all the information, trying to figure out where Elliot is, making sure nothing about this hack is getting traced back to them. Meanwhile, the world in and of itself is kind of collapsing. And you can see it in the background throughout uh, the episode and throughout 
pretty much the show, and it seems going to be the theme that's going to carry on into next season, is that people could, don't can't access their credit card machines. You know, credit cards are not working. Uh, ATM accounts. Uh, everything is chaotic. People are trying to get into the, you know, the 401k accounts. They're trying to figure out what money they have. Are their debts going to actually be erased? What has actually happened? And it's been very devastating. Um, the FBI is going to get involved. The government's getting involved. There's all this noise and news going on about this. There's people protesting in the street, all because F Society succeeded in what they were doing, which was, in essence, uh, erasing the debt of the world, you know, a la Fight Club style. So Elliot, you know, rushes to the F Society headquarters. He sees them into crunch mode of wiping everything out. He gets the upload from Darlene that he was gone for three days. She asks him point blank because he's freaking out and he's going on the computer to see that the hack actually has gone through. That is he seeing, you know, their father, which I'm not even sure if it's their father or not. I'm just assuming that it is and might be the case from the pictures but again Elliot is very unreliable all we know that Darlene is his sister but she's trying to like calm him down and he almost in a in a way not necessarily attacks her but is like you know we shouldn't have gone through this then we cut away to Gideon and he's sitting down with his accountant and he's trying to figure out how he's going to save his company I mean, he is the company that's supposed to safeguard Evil Corp's information, and that didn't happen. He needs to know, like, what he has in assets, liabilities, rent, you know, if there's anything that can be done to save anything. And his accountant is being very forthright and point blank with him that that might not be the case, that everything is basically a wash. The only silver lining is that he might not, in fact, actually have any debt, (laughs) excuse me, any debt anymore. And, you know, he's not very happy. He's a good guy that's kind of got caught up in the wake of this battle between F Society, or Elliot, I should say, and Evil Corp. And then we come back to Angela. And Angela is working for Evil Corp. Uh, she was a little late to the place. Everything is frantic. Everything is up in evil. She, she seems to be a higher executive there. Um, she's there to help and assist um the president who's about to give a news conference about what's going on at evil court he's trying to reassure the public and trying to assure them that the damage is not as pervasive as it seems but then he just kind of breaks down and admits that it's very devastating they have no idea what's what's happening it's really horrific uh they have no clue how to fix anything and then he picks up his bag a bag that Angela had moved earlier trying to get out of his way and he, he wanted back and actually yelled at her about it and then apologized because she was new and everyone kind of reminds her that she's new to this game that she's new here and she is she just just kind of sort of arrived at at the point where the company's in chaos uh he uh opens up his briefcase in a very graphic uh, fashion, even for, you know, I wouldn't even think even that Zito would be in the movies. Uh, he blows his head off on basically national television during this interview. And Angela is like right there. She kind of senses that something's off with him. It kind of goes towards him. And she ends up getting um, some blood on her shoes. So this incident is the reason why uh, the episode was delayed. A little bit prior to that, I just want to kind of get into it because before that, uh, there was a video that was released by F Society explaining their manifesto, how they're destroying Evil Corp, that the people are free, and that they should uh, embrace this new world, create a better world from the existing one. Uh, All while Elliot is trying to scramble around and find uh, Tyler Wellick. Um, He realizes that Tyler Wellick no longer works for Evil Corp. So he goes back to his home and has a very interesting encounter with his his wife. And they're both doing kind of, you might say, a game of chessmanship when it comes to obtaining information from each other. Elliot's saying that he's a person from work. She calls, you know, calls bullshit on him in a very polite fashion. She, you know, she's saying she hasn't seen him. He's supposed to be back later on today. And they're just having this all tired conversation. And then she finally says something in, um, I think she's Norwegian. 
that she would kill Elliot if something has happened to Tyler because she knows something is wrong. She knows by the presence of Elliot, the manner that they're talking, and the evasiveness that there's something wrong and that ty- there's something that has happened to Tyler. And she's somebody that's, you know, now knows what Elliot looks like, knows who he is. She's not somebody to F with. And I think that is one of those other things, those teases, that's going to come into the next season. Because this is pretty much, while this is a season finale, and normally season finales uh, close out a lot of questions and, and things like that, and sometimes they do bring forth other questions for the next season, it seems like there's a lot of questions being brought up and raised. Normally it's just one, and, and in this instance, there are several several going on here. And one of them is, um, you know, where is Tyler Wellick? Uh, meanwhile, F Society went to, uh, they were able to bribe a, a veterinarian place that cremates so that they could uh, actually literally burn all the, the drives and electronic equipment in this uh, facility um, at the high enough temperature so all the data is completely, um, you know, erased and done with. And then they, you know, free the dogs, which is pretty interesting and pretty fun and, and something that they, the, these people that are very against the way society is run would do. So Angela, um, after the suicide of the one of the CEOs that was talking to the uh, press, the other, or you can say the real power in the place, Mr. Price, the man who fired Wellick, um, meets with Angela and is like, you know, you, you can go home if you want to, but if you can... He's kind of hinter, hinting her, like, you know, you really should come to the press conference later on this afternoon. And he also observes that she can get new shoes. She actually tells him no. He's kind of amused by it. He, he you know, he sees what people see in her and he, he likes her about that. And um, it kind of ends there. And it's a very interesting, you know, unique conversation. Uh, we cut back to Elliot and Elliot is uh, scrambling around. He's back in... Um, Wellick's place, or not place, but his car. He's looking for clues and he's trying to think how Mr. Robot would have done something because he, he perceives that what has happened is a result of Mr. Robot taking control of him again. And he realizes that Wellick's sunglasses actually have a USB drive and he opens it and he's looking for the information on the drive. So Elliot's in the car and he's screaming for Mr. Robot to show up. Mr. Robot doesn't show up. He eventually goes back home and he looks at the USB drive and he sees that it's all the security data that Wellick had on him, that Wellick has been watching him for a while and that he knows that there's something off with Elliot. Uh, It shows the encounter that Elliot had with Mr. Robot where uh, Elliot believes that Mr. Robot pushed him off the boardwalk when the fact that he was talking to nobody and he fell. He made himself fall off the, the boardwalk. Meantime, while F Society is throwing a party to basically bring as many people into the place to put as many fin- fingerprints in the area and, and DNA and all this stuff to kind of obscure their presence in this place, uh, to basically have people mess it up a little bit and crash it. So that way, if anyone were ever to come back through the place, nothing's going to come back to them. Uh, meanwhile, Angela actually goes and gets some new pairs of shoes, and um, she's talking with the shoe salesman, and the shoe salesman notices that there's blood on her shoes, so that she has an evil corp credit card, and he goes, oh, you were, you were like there, you, you saw what happened. And he's shocked that she's there to get a pair of new shoes. And she's like, it's just a job. I needed a job. I'm in this debt. And he's like judging her, saying that these people are evil. You shouldn't be with them. Look what they've done. Look what has happened. And she basically just goes all evil corp on him and basically says, look, you need to get my new shoes, period. End of story. And he kind of like cops to it. And it, there's a like a kind of a vicious cold uh, veneer that has appeared on Angela uh, now as a result of, you know, taking this new position and the de- desperate situation she's in. Um, even with the lawsuit and everything and the loss of the job, I mean, she's in a tremendous amount of debt and she's pretty much just cornered. 
and she just kind of lashed out there and, and it would be interesting to see what happens to her uh, next season if she becomes more and more evil corpish. so we come back to Elliot Elliot's fed up he wants to know where Tyrell is he wants to know where Mr. Robot is so he goes into a coffee shop and he sees he asks for a phone and he's going to call basically 911 on himself if Mr. Robot doesn't show so Mr. Robot does show and he goes and they, he's here and Elliot's asking him you know where is Tyrell nobody knows where he is and Mr. Robot is like we made a deal that is mutually beneficial to the both of us and Robot and he asks Mr. Robot again where Tyrell is and he goes well if I know then you know and Elliot's like well you're not in control I know who I am I know what this is about so Tyrell is just or not Tyrell but Mr. Robot is like well you really think you're in control Elliot so he walks away from Elliot and Elliot watches as Mr. Robot interacts with a gentleman and basically insults him so that the the gentleman will knock uh, Mr. Robot out thus knocking Elliot out and as you're watching this it's very fascinating to see because you see the guy punch Mr. Robot but he turns he, as he's falling he turns into Elliot and Elliot is watching this and he his head kind of does his banter thing and he shakes and he kind of almost transfers like a, almost like a game character to to the posi- new position that he's in and uh, you have Mr. the voice of Mr. Robot or over him explaining to him you know I'm your I'm supposed to be your prophet you're supposed to be my god and then he, Mr. Robot picks up Elliot then we cut away to Angela and Angela is you know she's at the P, this PR meeting this, this press conference that the the, new, the CTO the man Price is the man who's really in charge of Evil Corp has and they have a bit of a conversation and she goes how are you so calm about all of this you know she's been watching him and she doesn't understand it and he's like you know people did this what has happened to them and this can be people can be found people can be stopped but that what is happening is is fixable really it's not something that you know is really that devastating in a sense you know once you find these people then we're going to solve this problem and he understands people he knows people he knows what people want what they need and how to find them and you know Angela you know listens to what he's saying and stuff doesn't quite buy it but again this is a very interesting conversation the kind of mindset of the person who's in charge of a corporation that's basically overnight has gone into the tank and that he's not panicking and he's not fraught with worry he's just very very calm about all of this so we cut back to F Society. There's there the party's happening. Darlene's trying to cheer up the the other three hackers, Trenton, Romero, and uh, your average nerd guy there, Mosby. And there's they seem down and out. It's not what they really truly expected. They're happy that people are there because then, you know, nothing's going to come back on them. But Darlene was like, "We freed all these people. We should be happy. We should be embracing what is happening in this party. We're all finally, you know, awake." Which is the mantra that comes from the last uh, F Society video that was released, which was probably done by Tyra Wellick. If you look at the F Society character, the eyes are blue, a very deep uh, blue that looks like. Tyra Wellick's eyes. And then we cut back to um, Elliot, and he's amongst the protesters that have been protesting throughout various cities, and now that it's very much hitting uh, New York. And uh, Mr. Robot's there, and Mr. Robot's doing his biggest crazy, you know, his best crazy uncle ever, talking about the way society is, the way it was happening, how they're freeing people, that Elliot needs to embrace this. Um, Elliot wants nothing to do this. He wants to just be alone by himself. And so he blocks the protesters. He blocks everything out. And he envisions himself. He's like actually in Times Square where the protest is. All by himself. There's no people on the street. And he's talking to uh, Mr. Robot. Uh, his mother's there. And a younger version of himself is there. And Mr. Robot is saying, you know, embrace us, basically. Embrace these personalities he created for himself. They know what is good they know what is happening and and Elliot is unsure he he, he doesn't want to be alone and he's they're saying that he they're going to be with him and he's not going to be alone 
and if you embrace him, they, he, Mr. Robot has a solution. And the solution is for Elliot to go back to his apartment, go back to to basically go back to his apartment, go on the computer, and basically watch as civilization as in itself has collapsed, which is something that Elliot does. But in the process of doing this, Elliot is literally broken. Uh, he's crying. He's kind of almost devastated in a sense. And then as he gets into the apartment and he's watching the screen, the door knocks. Um, and when you see Elliot and you can see his new face, he's kind of emotionless in a sense uh, that fear that anxiety that uh, hesitation the the will that he was in fighting Mr. Robot it seems to be gone and he goes to the door and that's the end of the the episode um, the episode goes a little bit longer there's like a little bit of an end piece and what it is is at the end of this end piece is basically uh, is revealed to the audience uh, there's a party I guess at the the same place that maybe Angela is, it seems like to be the same location. Uh, it's this big palatial place that might be or may or may not be uh, the CEO Price's home, who just happens to be a piece of property that Evil Corp owns. And White Rose is there. And White Rose is not actually White Rose in her, you can say, her, the persona that we saw before, where she, you know, she's transgendered, but she was in female clothing, but she as her, I guess, her male appearance. And she's sitting down with the, C, the CEO Price and they're having a conversation. She's moving it to actual business of going to the Congo. And the CEO is like, he doesn't want to hear about any of this. It, you know, all that can take care of itself. And White Rose is like, well, what's wrong? It seems like you have the, the weight of the world on your, your head there. And he's like, all I wanted to do was listen to this music. They hear it play. And uh, White Rose is like, you know, they're having this bit of conversation and the CEO revealed that they know who's responsible for the hack and they're going to deal with them in the usual manner in due time. And why Rose kind of ends this conversation that, you know, it's, because he kind of goes a bit silent and you also hear that you know it's White Rose because you hear the, the beat of his watch that the, the music that's playing, the harp, it's the same harp that, you know, supposedly are similar to that of what Nero was playing when Rome burned. And that is the end of the episode of Mr. Robot. So I'm going to go in real quick on what was real. Um, what was real is the nature of which F Society tried to scrub all the hardware and stuff like that. We saw Elliot use a similar method, but this is more detailed. They were just banging and burning and uh, drilling holes and all sorts of different hard drives. And then instead of using a microwave, they use a, a crematory place at a veterinarian place. Uh, the other thing that was item that was real was the USB port that was inside of Tyler Wellick's uh, sunglasses. People hide things of that nature all the time. It's in pins, it's in keychains, um, it's in the bottom of cups, uh, it's in shoes. Uh, this is a, a thing that hackers do. Um, you can actually buy similar devices like that for sunglasses. A lot of times they're like more like audio and capable stuff where you're, you're actually your sunglasses are your, your headphones at the same time. Um, but there's some, I've seen a similar type of deal uh, when it comes to sunglasses. They also have a USB stick inside it uh, before out there on the on the web. The other thing is just the you know the nature upon which the media and people reacted to the collapse. I mean, there were protesting, there was rioting in various different countries, uh, world leaders, as you saw through the various news uh, intercuts throughout the episode, is something that would be the typical response to this. Um, other than that, there wasn't really too much of reality as far as hacking goes because of the simple fact that we actually didn't see the hack, which I think was great. Um, now we're just going to kind of get into the to what I th think of the episode. Um, I know a lot of people online uh, thought it was slow and a little disappointed. Uh, I wasn't disappointed with the episode at all. I found it found it very intriguing. I found that all the different inner you know interweaving stories that were happening were. Um, 
satisfying, particularly the development of Angela as a character. I think she's having more agency and, and more direct action in what's going on. I like the twist of White Rose having some type of connection with the CEO of Evil Corp. I think it might be interesting to see just how in depth that relationship is uh oftentimes a lot of the hackers when it comes to like dark hacker groups uh they're associated with the national state uh you have the various like syrian electronic something or another is uh, with syria uh china is known for this or hiring various hacking groups it would be interesting because they uh, Dark Army was responsible for the hack within China. That perhaps maybe this was a state-sponsored action. Uh, it could be not anything at all, anything like that at all. Uh, it could be uh, he's playing both sides of the middle. Maybe he wants to take over Evil Corp or knock it out as a competition. It remains to be seen. There's so many questions um, that are left to be answered. Where is Tyra Willick? It's obvious that he is the spokesperson in the last F Society video, which detailed the manifesto of the freedom that F Society provided with people by deleting the Evil Corp database. Uh, is he dead? Is he disappeared? Is he the person that uh, Evil Corp believes is responsible for the hack? Uh, the other question is, is how law enforcement is going to track SS society? Uh, they have proven in the past to be quite capable of going after various different hacker groups and hacker individuals. Um, as, um, as I reviewed in the uh, book about Kevin um, Minnick. Uh, he was a hacker that the FBI tracked and traced down and put away for a number of years. Uh, you have seen the different s- stories that have happened with an anonymous group as well as Terra's groups. It would be interesting to see how you not, not, not just American uh, intelligence or law enforcement goes after F Society, but other world countries seeking this group that basically decimated a global economy. Uh, it will be interesting to see, you know, will F society have to go on the run? Will they, will wrong people be swept up in the net that is drawn because they're seeking out these particular hackers? Uh, what happens to the people in general? Not everyone is going to be pleased that all their entire debt is gone. What happens to the loans that people may have had out? What happens to the people's accounts and uh, monies that they had invested now that all that's disappeared? Uh, will Evil Corp just kind of take it to pay out debts? Or will they even honor the fact that the debt has been completely wiped out? It, it remains to be seen. There, there could be serious global economic concerns because if people can't take out loans, how they're going to expand their businesses, maybe pay out payrolls. Um, there's a lot of significant economic repercussions reco- 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 that could occur uh, because of this hack. Will there be more, you know, suicides like has happened with the the other CEO or whatever the ex- head executive there that was speaking with the, the news people play newspapers and blew his head off on live television. I mean, during the global collapse that just recently happened between 2007 and nine, or some say it's still occurring, but at the height of it, there were a lot of people that committed suicide. There's still people who commit suicide now. There was a young man that was a teenager that has some payday loans out and the payday loan company went into his account and wiped him completely out and he committed suicide. And that occurred in England, London, not more than two weeks ago. So what what could potentially happen? And what does this mean for Elliot when he embraces the whole uh, various hallucinations that he has been seeing of his both his mother and his father and his younger self? What does that mean for him? I mean, is he going to cease being the Elliot that we know or is he going to be a different Elliot? Was there ever a, an actual Elliot in of itself? Um, those are questions that need to be answered in the next season and I hope they're addressed and, and spoken about. Um, the creators of the show have stated uh, repeatedly that this is a five-year plan for this for uh, Mr. Robot, that the episodes are not going to expand. Like sometimes it happens when there's a hit show and this happened like with Sleepy Hollow where they went from, I think, to 12 to 18. It doesn't kind of hold up water. It, it helps is helpful when certain 
types of shows are shorter. Uh, look at Breaking Bad. They're not, there's not that many episodes. Uh, even uh, the Fear of the Fear the Walking Dead and Walking Dead are not there are not that many episodes, so there was only ten episodes of this. With the uh, season premiere being uh, ninety minutes, almost two hours, if you count all the commercials, we saw it that way, and the season finale being almost an hour. So, in essence, that you know, it's almost like eleven episodes, depending on how you view television, but. I would like it to see the remain to be 10 episodes. Um, but I'm just very excited. It was a, I, when I talk about this show, a lot of people are extremely excited about it. They're very impressed by it. There's other people that because of the buzz are now getting into it and are able to now uh, stream the episodes um, going through either through the USA Network. I believe pretty soon, sometime in October, you'll be able to watch the first season of Mr. Robot through Amazon, which has the exclusive rights to the show. Um, what else is, is going on with the show? Um, there's a, a lot of boards and artwork and a lot of, you know, conversations are being discussed just because of the themes that are being brought up throughout the show about, you know, monopolies and corporations and democ- the nature of democracy and the nature of individuality, how much control do we have, technology, um, should someone hack into a system like this and, and lay waste to the current financial systems? So that's pretty much it. Uh, to name the uh, winner of the Raspberry Pi 2 giveaway, it was Kirian. Uh, he won. He, if you go to the Mr. Robot F Society R- R- IRC group page, or if you type Mr. Robot, you can, you can see it. Uh, he was the winner of the prize uh, it was delivered to him all the way in Ireland you can see a picture of him uh, holding the Raspberry Pi 2 uh, it's been a very fun experience for me just uh, talking about this show and trying to find out details of the various hacks and items and just uh, speaking to people online about this show the excitement that it has um, when it comes back uh, next uh, season I hope it to be probably do this as a separate show a spinoff if you will from the main show but it I thank you all for listening I hope that you enjoyed the season finale I hope you enjoyed my reviews I, ho- I hope you enjoyed what is real section uh, where it talks about whether or not these hacks are uh, real or not hopefully next season maybe I'll be able to get somebody that has a bit of more computer experience than myself they can go into a bit detail about this um, I have some ideas and stuff and since I have time to plan it um, I'm be able to implement it and make it a much cooler experience for people so again thank you very much for listening and uh until next season you guys this has been a Hiroshima Space Odyssey Network production <laughs>